So in our previous video, we concluded our understanding of the changes in population size by this idea of R max. That's something that I actually want to work off of and begin understanding for our next idea and our next topic, which we're going to be entitling our next flowchart. And that's going to be the exponential model of growth. And keep in mind the idea of R max as we do this. Exponential model of growth. And when we say of growth, what type of growth do you think we're talking about? We're of course talking about the growth in population size because we're talking about population ecology. And there's an exponential model that we'll get into. In this exponential model, I like to call it the ideal model because this is going to be a situation in which every member of the population, so this is just sort of a background note, every member of population has access to has access to lots of resources so we have lots and lots of resources available to us and every single member uh, can freely and can freely reproduce up to their what we would consider physiological capacity physiological capacity so it's a very wordy definition but just bear with me um, let me define it and understand it in better detail so this is the literal definition of an exponential model of growth every single member of our population has access to lots of resources so they are always constantly with these resources so they're constantly able to grow constantly able to continue their life without any problems in terms of getting resources so that's good and they can also freely reproduce so lots of resources and freely reproduce so much so that they're actually reproducing all the way up to the capacity that they can possibly do based off of their physiological capability their physiological capacity just how much they can possibly reproduce is always going to be reached in this exponential model of growth another way to say all of these words is simply our max that's it that's exactly what Rmax stated. And if you go back to our previous flowchart, go back to your previous notes, you'll see that Rmax co uh, coincides directly with this definition. And thus it makes sense that exponential model of growth focuses on the idea of Rmax in populations. The exponential of model of growth will often and always come with what we call a J-shaped curve in population ecology. J-shaped curve. And this is something you should be able to recognize um, instantaneously. So in a J-shaped curve, all you're going to be looking for is the following shape to the curve. It's going to look sort of like this. This is an exponential model of growth that I just drew here with this line. And our axes here, we of course have to label them. Our, our y-axis is population size. Population size is often denoted just by the letter N, so I'll put that in parentheses. And over here is just time. And time is usually just denoted by the letter T. I'll put that in parentheses. So as time goes on, our population is said to exponentially increase. Look at my mouse. My mouse is exponentially increasing at this J-shaped curve. And so this is actually usually not seen in most populations, but um, we can state that it can be seen in what your notes would refer to as rebounding populations. Most of the time it's not seen in nature, but what we mean by the rebounding populations is that let's say a population had a catastrophic event. Um, the good examples in your textbook um, are these Afri South African elephants. They used to be hunted all over the place all the time. But what happened eventually was the fact that um, South Africa came up with laws that said no more hunting of our elephants. And because there was no more hunting, that meant that every elephant, all the elephants that were left after all the hunting that was happening, had lots of resources. And they were freely able to reproduce with each other. 
And thus, they were able to exponentially grow. And that's exactly what their population did. Their population grew at an exponential rate, and they were rebounding, meaning that they were rebounding from their very low rate. You can say over here was, let's say, 1980s or whatever. This is when uh, the hunting was very, very prominent. Then hunting laws came past, let's say, 1982. And then you had a huge, huge exponential rate of increase because of our RMAX being reached. Um, in addition, we can state that exponential growth is also equal to the following. We can state that exponential, meaning that growth in this J-shaped form, growth is equal to uh, the following equation. It's equal to dn dt, so that same derivative uh, equation that we saw. Um, it's equal to r sub instantaneous multiplied by n. So again, don't get too scared by the derivatives and the differential calculus that we're looking at. All we need to understand are the following. Usually what's going to happen in this situation is that we're going to, in an exponential growth situation, r instantaneous is going to be greater than zero. That is equal to eg for exponential growth. That's something you should just come away with from this equation. If r instantaneous is greater than zero, most of the time that will give us an exponential growth. But we also have to understand that r instantaneous, this instantaneous rate, is also not only going to be greater than zero, but it also is constant. It's a constant rate of increase. So what we mean by this is that, and this is the wrong way to look at it, I'm going to draw it here, we don't have a rate of increase that's like this, that's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then up like that. You see how we have an inconsistent rate of increase and then decrease, then, but we eventually do get back up to this high level, just like we did here. But what's the difference between these two? The difference is this is a constant slow rate of increase, and that constant rate of increase is defined by the fact that this is an exponential growth curve. And because it's an exponential growth curve, it's J-shaped, and because it's J-shaped, it has a constant rate of increase. This does not have a constant rate of increase, and it's not a good way of looking at it. So our rate of increase specifically is constant. Let me write that down. Rate of increase is what is very, very constant, and the population size is uh, also increasing with this rate. Population size, I will put an up arrow for increasing. Um, a good example of exponential model of growth, uh, something that in reality does do this, uh, are actually prokaryotes, specifically, let's say, um, bacteria. Bacteria are notoriously good at exponentially growing. Um, this is because bacteria reproduce via a very simple method called binary fission. So they, most of the time, ase asexually reproduce, and they just split apart from each other. Um, that reproduction is called binary fission, and this is so much, uh, so powerful, so exponentially um, utilize, utilizing this exponential growth curve that we see one bacterium, let's say we put one bacterium in a culture on a plate, and we let it sit there for about, let's say, 10 hours uh, overnight, essentially, we end up the next day with over 1 billion bacteria. So we go from 1 to 1 billion over 10 hours. That is clearly an exponential growth. That is huge amount of growth over a very short period of time. Um, and this is simply because bacteria are known to divide every 20 minutes. And if you do the math, I'm sure it comes from 1 to 1 billion uh, if you see this every 20 minute dividing, that means they double, they increase their rate every 20 minutes. They increase their population size every 20 minutes. They double it every 20 minutes, essentially. So those are bacteria. And finally, last thing to understand about exponential uh, growth is that this is, uh, as much as we study it, it's actually quite unrealistic in nature. Um, and that's specifically due to a couple of things, unrealistic, uh, comma, rare in nature. It's seen in bacteria, but it's not usually seen in most other higher organisms, higher order organisms like us or like other animals. And we have to ask ourselves, why? Why is this not seen all the time? Because we are curious individuals, of course, and we can answer that question by understanding population ecology. Because what happens is a population will eventually have to meet what we would call resistance, will meet 
resistance. That's the term used by population ecologists. And we can also say population will, will meet resistance or and also um, slash limits. So those two things, resistance and limits, will eventually be met by real-life populations. So what we simply mean by that, furthermore, is that if you have an increase in population size, so that arrow going upwards in denotes an increase in population size, then dot, 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 what's going to happen is, in nature most of the time, resources are going to get lower and lower. Because there are more individuals, they're going to, there's going to be less and less food. There's going to be less and less mates. And also what's going to happen is that you're going to actually increase the wastes in the environment. Remember, this is not just about the living, but also the non-living. And that waste will accumulate. And if that waste accumulates at a very high rate in a very densely packed population, you're going to have lots of toxins that's going to cause eventually a limit to be reached, a resistance to population size and exponential growth. So we usually do not see this J-shaped curve. This is very rare. It is seen in bacteria, of course. It's a very, very much seen in bacteria, but is not seen in most of nature, in higher order organisms like us, like animals, because of this resistance and limits that are presented by the environment as denoted by this increase, decrease, increase relationship that we have here. So that is our exponential model of growth. In the next video, we're going to be looking at what we call the logistic model of growth.